Um, Hello, welcome to the last meeting of the Need and Human Rights Committee for this year. I will just begin by reading our draft, draft script for um, remote open meetings. Um, I'm Christina Matthews, co-chair of the Need and Human Rights Committee. Uh, let me confirm that all members and uh, are here and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Cynthia, oh, Cynthia's not here yet. I'll start with Jen Howard Schroeder. I'm right here. Oh, are you? Okay. Sorry, didn't see that. Oh, yeah, there you are. Uh, oh, here, Cynthia. Good on. <laughs> Jen Howard Schroeder. Hey, Jen Howard is also here. Jared Pizzuto. Jared Pizzuto is here. Marlene Schultz. Present. Ashok Mehta. Yes. Julie Venables. Here. Amelia Klein. Here. Carrie Hurwich. Here. And Christina Matthews, I'm also here. Let me make sure Bud is not waiting anywhere here. No, okay, so that's great. Um, this open meeting, oh, and we have um, Sandy Sincata from the town who's here and also Katie King, our assistant town manager who's also present and a couple of folks who are uh, uh, attending um, but not able to, uh, to speak at this point. Um, this open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless it is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. Um, for this meeting, the Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating, uh, oh, actually all uh, attendees are participating by video conference. Please be aware that um, others may be able to see you and um, take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Okay, let's begin and start with the first item on the agenda. Um, the first item on the agenda is a welcome to um, Sophia Dedek, who um, is a Needham High School rising senior and uh, just joined the board. Um, but Sophia is actually not, she was supposed to be here, but she's not able to join tonight. So we just, we'll just let everyone know that um, her appointment did go through. And um, the, we, in fact, we, I was just told by Sandy that another appointment went through, which is Tina Burga, Burgos, who is also joining the committee. Um, and Tina, I'll just tell you a little bit about her. Tina expressed an interest a couple weeks ago, and she is um, a small business owner in town. She owns Covet and Lou. It's a clothing boutique in town and is on the Council of Economic Advisors. And she has been very interested in, um, with current events, trying to get more involved locally. And I had a conversation with her this past week, and um, I, I'm, I really thought she would be a good fit. And um, I'm excited to have these two people joining us. Does she does she live in town? Mm -hmm. Okay. She does, and she has kids is, in the school. Is she, is she here tonight? She's she is she's not. I think she was um, planning to be, but I don't see her on this. Yeah. No. Can you tell us the two people who are attending who were? Yes. Yeah. So we have two members. Uh, I mean, sorry two um, community members who are attending. One is Ana Geraldo Kerr, who is currently a library trustee and very active in the town and also um, curious to learn more about the, about the committee. And Renaz, Cynthia, can you remind me of Renaz's last name? Uh, Mula. Renaz Mula. Who uh, um, Amelia had talked with and I had too. So she's very interested in, in uh, getting involved with human rights in town. She was, uh, just to remind you, she was one of the uh, presenters at the Suitcase Stories, I think it was last summer, at Temple of Alone. Last June, a year ago. Yes. Only last year. Wow. 
Great. So we're happy to have those and people. If you have one more person, um, I don't know who it is. It's the initials MTR. Okay. I don't know who that is either. Can I ask a question? These people aren't allowed to be on Zoom? Um, the way so I think it's set up is that all of the committee are panelists and you have regular conversation. When you have a uh, public comment or you want someone to speak, I can allow that to happen, but they're not typically, the public isn't typically invited to participate in the discussion. Right, that, I understand that. Um, but I'm wondering, should we have them introduce themselves so we can see them and let them say about their interest or something, or is that not? Sure, you know what, we're a little bit pressed for time. It's the only reason I just thought we should, we, but yes, we can do, maybe we can do a quick one minute intro. For but I think it, as, a, as attendees, unless you make them a panelist, we can't see them anyway. All right, I'm gonna just make a panelist real quick and then I can move them back. Okay. There you are. Hi, Hi. I'm Monique Carrington. Um, You're seeing my old screensaver because I teach children and that is from the Russian Revolution. I haven't figured out how to get rid of it yet, but I teach Model UN. And so I'm also on the Needham Arts Council with Kristen McCosey. Great. Hi, hi, Monique. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. And Anna? Hello there. Yes. Yeah. My name is Anna Geraldo Kerr. For those who don't know me, uh, as Christina has mentioned, I'm a library trustee. I also am part of the committee for CPAC, Special Education Parent Advisory Council. And um, for, um, just uh, finished uh, serving on the board for Citizens for Needham Schools. And I also contribute to the Needham Diversity Initiative. So um, just looking forward to learning more about your group. Thank you. And Renaz, we can't see the video, but maybe we can hear her. Renaz? She's on mute. I just mm -hmm. asked on mute. There we go. Hi, Renaz. Oh, she's back on mute. <laughs> I think you're on mute. Do you... I went on mute. There you are. Here she is. Hi there. Hello, Renaz. Hi. My name Welcome. is Renaz. But my name is Rinaz Mahalla Mohammed, and I'm really interested in joining the human rights. I got in touch with Emilia in um, February, I think. I was planning to attend the March meeting before the, um, uh, the COVID-19 thing started. And um, I'm happy to be here. And um, I would like to help as much as I can. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so um, great. It's so it's so nice to have have community members present at this meeting. Um, the second item on the agenda is approval of minutes from our last meeting. Did everyone have a chance to look at them? And it, do you have any um, any feedback? Or do I hear a motion to yes? Yeah, I thought Marla. you did an excellent job of summarizing a great deal that had gone on. Thank you. I move that we accept the minutes as um, presented. Second, Thank please. Thank you. Great. So we have to um, take a vote now. Can, oh, right. <laughs> okay. Um, let's start with Cynthia Ganang. Um, yes, or yay, or something. <laughs> yes. Jen Howard Schroeder. Jen, you're on mute. Jen, we're just voting to approve the minutes. I'm sorry, I'm in my car, so I was trying to mute it. Um, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not driving. I'm parked out in front of a restaurant that I'm going into. <laughs> Do you vote for the minutes? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, Jared Pizzuto. Um, I wasn't at the last meeting, so. Oh, that's I right. Abstain. So you can abstain. Okay. Abstain. Uh, Marlene Schultz. Approve. Yes. Ashok Mehta? Yes. Julie Venables? Yes. Amelia Klein? Yes. Carrie Herwich? Yes, I approve. 
And Christina Matthews, yes, um, I approve the minutes. Did you get Julie? I did, yeah, great. So hold on, okay, we already um, went through public participation. Um, the next item is um, an update on the At My Neighbor's Table event that's coming up on June 24th at 6.30. It is the um, potluck dinner series that has been happening in town for at least two years, maybe more. And maybe you can give a quick little intro for five, four years? Four years. I think this is the um, eighth or the ninth. The first two started at the Presbyterian Church, um, and we've been partnering with CMM, Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries. Um, yeah, go right ahead. Do you want to do a little intro for folks who don't know, and then we can you can do an update on where things are with well, them? Uh, maybe Amelia, do you want to do this? No, you can. I'll pop oh, in. You'll pop in. Okay. Um, so the Cooperative Metropolitan Ministries is an interfaith group in Boston, one of the oldest, started in the 60s, and um, they started running some interfaith um, dialogues, potluck dinner dialogues at the Presbyterian Church. We had two the first year, and then um, we decided they weren't enough in, uh, interactive, so um, a few of us took over, um, mostly uh, CC from First Parish, and, um, and I have sort of been chairing them. Amelia's been chairing the meetings uh, for this one. And we've dealt a lot with um, race and um, I mean, restorative justice. Yes, restorative justice and, and a cultural appropriation. Um, lots of different, lots of different themes. And we were going to do one in the fall, um, and because of what's going on right now in um, in the, the country and all the um, racial issues going on, we decided to put one together very quickly. Uh, and so we will be having one next Wednesday. Um, we have had a tremendous amount of response. Uh, Amelia, can you help me with the title? It's, um, I don't have it with me. It's, I change. Um, Actually, we should send something to the committee. I think we send it to everyone else except the committee. I, yes, I think are. everybody on the committee is on that list. Did, did other okay. people did not get it? It's a very long title. Um. <laughs> it's um, ex not exploring. It's um, okay. Here we go. Unpacking, unpacking structural racism, structural racism, and deconstructing white privilege and power. Good. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> Uh, so, um, because we can't be at people's tables and have it potluck like we've had it in the past, we're going to do um, breakout rooms so that people will still be able to have small conversations and we will have table leaders um, helping to facilitate the conversation. We have two presenters um, f from, one's a psychologist and one is maybe a social worker, yeah, or work background. maybe yeah. a social worker, um, who um, are going to have a, a couple of videos, um, but most of the time is going to be for conversation so that we can talk to our neighbors. They will be giving us some context, uh, the presenters, and, and um, giving us questions to talk about in our small groups. We're hoping that we will just have about, um, seven or eight people in one of the in the breakout rooms um, for the for the small group discussion so that we can keep with the model that has been so successful we we've only advertised for two days we just got the flyer ready we already the last I heard had 90 participants which is phenomenal <laughs> okay Amelia fill in um, there will be high school students that will participate in uh, in some way in leading the discussions. Um, oh, the ones who've been involved in courageous conversations. Yeah. yeah. And and the title. I just want to say the title sounds kind of academic, and but once you read the description of what we're going to do, what they help to do, uh, and and the moderators, the facilitators are fantastic. We had a Zoom meeting with them. Was it this week or last week? Not too long ago, and, and they are really dynamic people, um, African-American woman and a white woman and with a very interesting background in facilitating these kinds of conversations. So uh, that's, um, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, also, um, 
Now that's my train of thought. Um, well, yeah. if you're interested, you should sign up because there's a chance that we are going to cap it. Yeah. Um, and also, Sandy sent it out from the town. So if you get those blasts from the town, Sandy so nicely sent it out. So it went to everybody. Yes, thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Great. Yeah. And the other thing I just wanted to make note is that both of these um, speakers are, are with Ford, the Families Organizing for Racial Justice, which is an organization in Newton that I know Jen has followed for a long time. And we've kind of been talking about, you know, their work the last couple of years. And so I think it'll, they will be a good, um, good duo for us to learn from. Oh, and there's one other thing. The, the people who are going to be facilitating, the table leaders, call the table leaders, are actually going to have a training session on Monday because we do anticipate some very interesting conversations and we want to be prepared to deal with inappropriate or um, mm -hmm. conflicting um, comments or um, negative statements. So we're going to have a long Zoom meeting on Monday to be prepared for that. Yeah. Amelia, how many people are going to be hosting the Zoom so that... Um, two. Okay, so I would recommend maybe adding one or two more. I host a lot of webinars and things where it's helpful to have like one person pay attention to whether it's somebody changing their video screen or trying to do something inappropriate or, or if the chat's going to be turned on, make sure, having somebody... Just a little food for thought. I've done a lot of these and, and it's mm -hmm. always helpful to have... We try to always have at least three so that one person can really pay attention to what's the overall and then other people can pay attention to sort of little pieces of it. Just a, just a tip. That's a great idea. I think we know, I know we have two. Yeah, we have two. Thank you. The other thing is we're going to be training more table leaders than we probably will be using. So just um, to let people know that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Did it, does anyone have any, any further comments or questions about that? Okay. Then we will move on. The next item on the agenda, um, once again, is rotation of our uh, committee leadership. And that we need nominations for the coming year. Um, and so I don't know if anyone has had a chance to think any further, um, but we are in need of a chair or two co-chairs. Um, I, I definitely cannot. I know I said I'd let you guys know, but my, my role at the school I work at is going full time and um, there's just no way I could do it. Could you clarify for me, Jennifer, are you going to step down as chair or co-chair or would you stay on if there was a co-chair? My intent was to step down as co-chair. I would like to remain on the committee as a member. Okay. I was an, an active member who's not responsible for all yeah. of it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I didn't know that. Any any nominations? I, I kind of feel the same way. Like I just don't think with the kids and trying to work and not knowing exactly what next year is going to look like as far as kids going to school or what is going to happen with that. I just don't think I can take it on realistically mm -hmm. and do a good job. Yeah. Um, I, I, was a shook. You weren't at the last meeting, so someone nominated you. <laughs> Where is he? He's frozen, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a joke. I can't. I just want to be an active member. I wish I can do that, but sorry. I know. I don't know. I don't know what the precedent for this is, folks. Um, you know, a, a committee without without chairs. Um, I don't think you can have it. <laughs> Christina, could you have some some people do it as an an interim kind of rather than committing for the whole year to have uh, at least uh, let's say two people commit for the summer and through September I'm just trying to think of other ways mm -hmm. I don't know is that um, what do you think Jen I, I don't know I guess in, in my head I'm Trying to think through, I don't, I don't know what the logistics of this would look like, or if it's even permissible. 
but if there is a way to break up some of the responsibilities mm -hmm. involved in chairing the committee that maybe people would be willing to take on um, particular pieces of it. Um, but I, I don't know, I'm trying to think if there's, I mean, I, I know that our, um, the committee guidelines talk about there being, a, a, I think like a chair, a vice chair and a clerk. I don't, I don't actually even think that we're necessarily following the model that's in the committee handbook at the moment anyway. Yeah, we aren't I, because we, it, this worked better for us. And the rotating, um, instead of a clerk, the rotating um, secretary role. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I think one advantage to to kind of resurrecting the idea of a clerk, um, even even if we continue to rotate taking taking the actual notes um, from the meetings, would be that perhaps that person could take on some of the um, communication pieces that can be, you know, fairly overwhelming. Um, well, I think okay. regardless of that. No matter if people split up responsibilities, someone needs to have a coordinating um, mm -hmm. role. Mm -hmm. So, you weren't you guys meeting today with Mo and Kate? Yep, we did. And did they have any thoughts? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure how they could they could um, help us with this with this issue. Was I mean, there I any more? To, it, I'm sorry, was there any more talk of us um, moving from a committee to a commission or any anything like that? Was that at all brought up? I, I not, not to that extent. Um, I think, you know, uh, that we were going to report out a little bit about that, what that meeting was in a little, in a little while. Um, okay. but, um, but the short answer is not, not specifically that they are looking for us to make recommendations. We're looking for what? Recommendations. Because I talked to someone today who said because of the limitations of the role, they would not want to join the committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that that is part of the challenge. There are some limitations when you are a town committee. I mean, that's been, that's been echoed by a lot of us, especially this year, given how many things have popped up that we felt like we couldn't respond. And I think that that, I can totally see that being something inhibiting anyone from wanting to join. It's, it's you know, it's one of those things I think we really have to figure out um, because I think it's going to change, one, whether or not the Human Rights Committee should stay under the town and two if it should stay literally in existence because i think it's hard to operate the way we are that's that's how i feel mm. Mm. well i think i think there is value in having us be part of the town um and um but i you know i'm concerned about leadership mm. yeah so even if we move into the direction, Marlene, I said I would work with her to look at what it would mean to be a commission and what's required and, you know, maybe have a, a list of the pros and cons. It isn't going to happen right now. And I do see that a lot of people are committed to being on the committee and doing the work. And I think part of what's going on is, is throughout the town, throughout the, the country that people even though we're not going out, there's a sense of being, of having more than we can handle. And then as Julie was saying too, the uncertainty of how it's going to play out. So that's why it occurred to me that if there was a way we could, could divide up the uh, responsibilities more. But I, I agree that there has to be a someone who stands up and answers as being mm -hmm. there. Yeah, um, and I think, I, I, I really think, I think it, has it would be, be tough. I think it would be tough for one person to take on all of all of that too. I think you do need at least two people yeah. <laughs> to lead the committee. Um, Cynthia, would you be at all interested? Well, I might be able to do a supportive role with somebody, but I keep wanting to drop out of different groups I'm in, but it never <laughs> seems to <laughs> to happen. But I could be um, like an a vice 
Oh, advice, yeah. Advice. Okay. Person okay. with someone. And I know we have Amelia and Marlene have years of experience and have uh, Marlene stayed on to work with Jen when Jen first came on. And I think Amelia and, and Marlene had many years of, of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can, I'd, ha I'd be happy to help like organize things behind the scenes. Like um, I, I know I've said for a couple of years, like we have a Google account, we should have everything in Google Drive and it's just, it makes it easier across the board. Like I'm, I'm happy to help with that stuff because I can do that whenever, like late at night when I'm done with my work and that kind of stuff. But I'm not available at all for a lot of the day time, anything and meetings mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So that's, um, but I, I obviously I, I love the work that we do and I do think it's important. So I, I certainly want to stay on and help. I just, um, you know, I, I think we're in a tough spot right now. Yeah. Marlene, Amelia, do you all have any interest in stepping back into it? No, I, I was on over four years. I think one of the, uh, and I enjoyed it and I'm, I am still want to be part of this group. Um, but I think to make the committee, no matter how the tasks are divvied up, there has to be more involvement by more people on the committee. Um, mm -hmm. If you have people that show up for half the meetings um, and, and don't even take minutes, and then you have others like the chairs or co-chairs who are out doing all the legwork and doing the correspondence. I mean, it's, it's, the committee has, has to be more involved. More people who come to the committee, and maybe that might be something that has to be emphasized when recruiting new people and when interviewing them for the mm -hmm. position. Yeah, that, that honestly, that is something I have I I have been very explicit about <laughs> that we need we need worker bees. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things that we have talked about um, when Amelia and I were chair. Uh, we had met with the vice chair of the select board, um, to, who is the person who interviews all of the candidates. And we said clearly that people need to know this is a working committee. And that what we are looking for is people not just to come to a monthly meeting, but there's so much going on that they need to be committed to doing the work um, that needs to be done. And I think that's crucial. Um, it's we're not just looking for bodies, but we're looking for people who can get in there and get their their hands dirty. Um, and and I, mean, I feel terrible about no one wanting to step up to to do this, but um, I really. I'm trying to be like Cynthia and I'm trying to do less, but it doesn't seem to be happening for me. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, I care deeply about this group um, and um, I'd be willing you know, to work with somebody. I, I'm not willing to step back into the role of chair. Okay. Um, be quiet. Maybe someone needs to be mute. I know who is that actually? I can't quite tell. Um, all right. Well, I folks, I don't quite know exactly where to to leave things because it would it would be nice to end the year um, knowing. Um, who will carry on the work um, because we all do agree that it's important and I think the town does need this space. Um, and we can, I mean, we can, we can talk to the select board again. Um, you know, uh, you know, we do have some new members who are, um, you know, coming on board. So Sophia is a high school student. So I, sh I don't think she, she's not the, the right person to take on a role like this, but um, Tina, she's new and I feel like, you know, I did it, I did tell her that we are looking for leadership. Um, and, but I don't, I don't think it would be right when someone first starts to start as chair. Um, um, I mean, if there is somebody who's had leadership before in other committees, um, I would be willing to work with someone to help bring them along. I'm sure, Emilio, you would probably do that too. Um, to bring them up to speed if there is somebody who is interested um, 
in, in doing that. I mean, it sort of happened when I joined the committee, there was a lack of leadership and I became chair pretty quickly after, <laughs> um, Cynthia's smiling, after I joined the committee, so. You'd been, on, you'd been on it before too and had been on other human rights committees. Right. So that was a little different. But that's true, that's, you're right. We saw you. <laughs> Jen, do you have any, any, I feel like we should wrap up this portion of the agenda. Do you have yeah, I don't, I don't mean to be stone silent. I, I'm really struggling with, with this um, right now. Um, I, you know, I think that part of it is that um, we have been operating for the last several years um, in, I think, a, a fairly reactionary um, mode in that there was so much happening around us and we were constantly being um, approached to work on other people's um, mm -hmm. projects that are all, you know, certainly squarely within the NHRC place, but that um, that that made it feel very unwieldy. Like with, there was never, I, I feel like um, I can't even believe my sales. But I got, if if we were deciding if we could decide that we were going to try and tackle very specific things um, in the coming year and kind of make a commitment to each other that um, we're, we are we're shifting from being a repository for a lot of different people's ideas and programming um, and had, a, had kind of a more focused uh, idea of what we, what we really wanted to spend our time on then I would feel better about kind of sticking with it. Um, but mm -hmm. I think when, when we end up having to, to kind of manage our involvement in lots of different community activities, it makes, personally, it makes me feel very, spread very thin. And so um, that's really what makes it difficult for me to, to say, uh, you know, I'll, I'll stick around it and stay in this position. Um, I certainly am very interested in trying to help the um, select board think about <laughs> how we're going to work differently in the coming year because I think that there is an opening at this point and an acknowledgement from them that something does have to be different about the way things are and so that makes me feel like about, about trying to kind of address some of the the issues that we've been talking about for over a year now about not feeling like we had any real authority to do anything. Um, but for example, you know, some of some of the programs that we co sponsor on even when it's not um, a lot of heavy lifting on our part, to be honest with you, just trying to keep up with the things that I need to post and send out to the yeah. list. And that when those things come at me in the middle of the day, and I'm trying to work it, I get totally overwhelmed very quickly. So I guess I have no, I have no solution. Um, I am certainly willing to try to talk further about how we might be able to um, think about what this looks like going forward. Um, yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. I think we tried to kind of bring this up at the beginning of last year that we are partnering on so many events with um, so many groups in town. And I think that expectation has been set from so many years prior, this is how we've done things. Uh, but if, if we shifted some of that, um, because yeah, you're right, even if we're not putting them on, we are kind of managing the communications and the coordination of a lot of that inform the select board, update them on where, you know, where things are with this and um, yeah, all the postings. And, but I think if we moved maybe into uh, thinking more about, you know, uh, as the, the select board mentioned this morning, kind of maybe a, a true advisory role and um, that, that perhaps that's a better use of our time than kind of bits and pieces and all these different throughout the, the town. And I don't know what that would look like, but I think that would change the, the scope of our work a lot if we kind of pulled back from, you know, having our hands in all of these different places. Is that sort of what I'm hearing from you? That's what you're hearing from me. I don't know what you're hearing from everybody else. Yeah. Would it be useful for you to skip in the agenda to that meeting that you had? Because maybe that will give all of us 
a, a different perspective so that more people may think about whether, you know, see themselves in some part of the organization in a different way. Mm -hmm. Can I um, mention something? I agree with you, Christina. I think our role has changed. And maybe one of the things we need to do is look at our mission and maybe rewrite that. Because I think we're not the Needham Diversity Initiative anymore and we can't compete with them and they're doing an incredible job and we're supporting them. But we, the community forums, and, and that involves a lot of extra time. Um, I think I think the transition from my perspective has been to be more in a, of an advisory or more focused on working within the town officials with the select board, advising them, informing them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the rapid response, you know, coming yes. up with the concept and, and getting them on board or getting them to think about how this might be uh, important for our community. The police issues now, that's an internal, a lot of our focus now is now internal. And I think we really play an important role. And I would also like to say that um, I don't think our presence is less felt or is less in the community. I was really impressed with the Needham Times last week. Thank you so much, Christina, for the wonderful statement. And there we were in the guest column, a statement from the Human Rights Committee. I thought that was yeah. really powerful. And, and who do people come to in town when, when there's an issue? Needham Diversity Initiative, they come to Human Rights Committee. Uh, Progressive Needham. Um, uh, Immigration Justice Task Force, they all want our support and our affiliation. I, I, I think our presence is felt and I think we're respected, but I think our role has changed. And maybe one of the things we might want to do in the fall, as we get, begin the next uh, fiscal year, is to look at that um, mission or uh, re uh, clarify our role. And, mm -hmm. and now that's as a, co a committee. If we want to go in the direction of commission, we're going to have the same obstacles. We need leadership. We need people involved. It's going to be the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus other complications. How how does it formed? Who are we elected? On um, you know, all of that. Um, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think we can play an important role right now. Um, with the with the select board, you know, just the fact that you know they asked Katie to join us. Um, you know, for this meeting, I think that that's an important um, sign, you know, that they, they do want our input and want to build this relationship. Marlene, yeah. Yeah, I just um, wanted to say the idea to me about being a commission, if we would go that route, um, again, we still need leadership but uh, we would be able to act more independently and thus more quickly. Um, that, that would be my hope. And while we talk about, or Jen was talking about, you know, focusing on a certain area, we don't know what the world will be like month to month. Things seem to be changing so rapidly. Uh, and there are things that need to be addressed from a human rights perspective. Um, and I, um, I wouldn't want to limit what our role is when, um, when the world is just topsy-turvy right now. I just, uh, you know, who would have known that we were going to um, be dealing so much with the, what's going on with the police um, in this country? Uh, and we've been dealing with it, but now it's like right out there center in, in the center of everything. Um, so we also have to be nimble enough to be able to respond to whatever is going on that's important um, in the, the realm of human rights. I just want to clarify, I didn't, I didn't mean to say that I think we should narrow our, our sights on particular issues or um, particular projects. What I meant was, I think, I think drawing kind of from what Amelia was saying and what Christina is saying in terms of really focusing on um, building in that advisory role to the select board, to, to giving that the more fortification and spending time, like that our role in the community is trying to advise them about what's happening. Mm -hmm. And I guess, um, you know, I think like NDI is amazing set up to do um, education and to raise issues that need to be discussed. 
um, inform, you know, educational type programming that nobody um, I think with, you know, Eden Progressive is an amazing advocacy group that really can get out there and hammer hard on, on advocating for human rights. I think that to me, what, what role we could be playing is in really trying to bring along the select board and the town into these discussions in a different way. And so that if our focus, if our focus was on building that relationship and trying to get them engaged, um, as opposed to, you know, co-sponsoring the, um, I don't know, the human trafficking event or, um, do, do you know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I'm not saying you're right. Obviously we don't know what's coming, but we do know that consistently groups and community members are wanting to engage the select board in this. And I think that it has been so, 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 so slow to get us to this place, but that we do have a, mm -hmm more of an opening I feel now than before, not only in the channels of communication, but then in them um, having some appreciation for what role we really could play for them as they're getting bombarded with um, community concerns. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think another thing this group has um, accomplished a lot with is the relationship with the school department. And we know that uh, the superintendent said he chose to come to the Human Rights Committee. He did not, he's not going to the diversity group and obviously Progressive Needham is a, a political group. Uh, and I think that his coming and being in person, that he really listened to things in a way that that had never happened in previous years. So that they're really, mm -hmm. it's like we're on the edge of a whole lot of things that I totally agree with Jennifer that those those other events are important and it does kind of seep the energy a bit uh, from the major focus. Yeah. I mean, I think that that there, it, I'm looking at the time, um, if, I mean, the next piece that's on the agenda is really just a list of the things that we kind of had in the works um, that will, kind of stay on the works. I do think that Cynthia's point about um, kind of hearing more about our meeting today with with Kate and Mo and Matt Borelli um, and Katie is important. Um, Christina, yeah. do you want to start yeah. or do you want? No, you can you can go ahead. But where do, where are we leaving this for now? So right now still we um, what's our leadership uh, situation? <laughs> Yeah, you, you were starting to say, well, if we could kind of pare this down, um, was there, well, did you want to finish that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my family will murder me. I know, I know, I know, I know. So suppose, Jen, you had an assistant person who took care of all of the things that had to do with other organizations of listening to them, of bringing it here, of deciding to be part of it or not, of sending the things out. Because so I, th I, th I think that's, that's a manageable thing and I already do some of that. So if you, if you wanted somebody who'd take care of that, I'd be glad, I'd be glad to do that part. <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> that's very generous of you, Cynthia. <laughs> And people have gotten to know Jen and Christina, I think, throughout the town and in a lot of groups. And you've been willing to to draft statements and go to meetings and all in a way that's it's really been a, um, an incredible kind of face of the um, Human Rights Committee to other people and to the town. Yeah, I know. Jen, Jen looks like is just, yeah. You, I, I'm getting her view that you, yeah, you do not want to do this another year. Could she I, do I, it I a few like months more? Go. <laughs> what did you say? I really don't feel like I can do it well. Yeah. Yeah. I really don't. Um, all, all I can say is that I, I would continue to think about it. I, I think if I committed right now that I, um, it wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. 
So at this point, we're, you know, Cynthia's kind of saying that she, that she could um, help someone to uh, maybe be a co-chair. Um, but we don't yet have someone else who would, who would be willing to Mar Marlene offered, too. I was talking about taking care of those organizational relationships. And mm -hmm. then maybe if Marlene helped, especially if there's somebody new, I think you were saying that you could help them. Yes, I, I said I would be happy to work with someone but okay i didn't want to take on the leadership myself um okay so i think i think that okay we see i think we just have to leave it at that for now um we didn't really come to a to a resolution but um and i but I, it, do, I, it does sound like everybody's willing to pitch in and try to do something to keep it going I did I know, hear that. There, there that that's does the need echo. to be some leadership. There has to be some resting place to um, right. for things to land. So I think that that role is so key. Okay. So okay. Can, so can we, we have four? Can we have four chairs? <laughs> four co chairs? <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> so are you volunteering, Carrie? So what, Jen, Carrie, Cynthia, and me? You know what that means? You know how much communication we have to have? That's a, that's a whole other layer. I think she was joking. <laughs> oh, okay. Were you joking, Carrie? I, I mean, sort of. I, I think that if, so I have been involved in committees where we have had like a tri-chair situation, which I have to say is extremely helpful and you have you know one person say like myself who's very good with the communication and the social media and the you know the that side of things and then you have someone who's really good with the you know meeting with the other organizations in town and you have somebody who's you know really good with kind of keeping uh, everyone on schedule and on task and you know I, I do think it 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 is possible in situations like that um okay maybe we can explore that um we can look into that. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll have a conversation and see if that's, some, if that's a place. So, that we can. If Marlene and, and Carrie and Jen could do that, I would be glad to be an assistant. You didn't have to talk to me all the time, but just give me give me things to do. Kind yeah, of I, feel, I feel similarly. Like, I think I could, I could do some of the less maybe time sensitive stuff because I feel similarly with Carrie as far as like, if there's a meeting during the day, I'm probably not making it, but if there's some sort of marketing or something that I could do at any time or um, I don't mind you know like the minutes doesn't bother me if that helps people like I'm, ha I'm happy to step up my role just not necessarily uh, Julie just said she would be the clerk I just heard that <laughs> as long as it's I, I didn't hear that <laughs> helps I, I want to something. take on a piece not the the chair role of the chair but I would also like maybe what we could do is make a list of things that, that need official um recognition in in the committee just the basics and i do think yeah. amelia you you okay. made a very good point of of us revisiting not only just our mission but maybe our bylaws like i i do think that that's something we probably should take on at some point and kind of look at you know i think they're probably a million years old from when you started have they been redone since then no okay so another, another is that something for thought. anybody wants to do over the summer? Because I, I do think that, that that's a key piece before starting the next year. If we could try to think about, I mean, maybe we can't finalize a mission, but at least, you know, kind of thinking about uh, focusing our, our mission and our scope of work um, and, and having that conversation with, with the select board. And so I think that that piece coupled with kind of being a safe space for the community, maybe not being the... Um, you know, a, a, a body that is involved in every activity, but I, I, I sort of feel like that advisory role to the, to the select board and being a, a space, you know, safe space for the community are kind of our two biggest unique um, assets that we have in this, in, you know, for this group to, um, to move forward. So maybe there is a way this summer that we, that could be done, you know, thinking about focusing our, our mission and scope. Maybe um, we could begin by uh, maybe the co-chairs, uh, present co-chairs, previous co-chairs, could begin, uh, could itemize the kinds of responsibilities we've mm -hmm. had. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and build yeah. on that, work from there. And, maybe and prioritize, like, give your, with your experience, what do you think is 
what we should be prioritizing and what we could all divide up in a manageable yeah. way. Yeah, sure, sure, we can, we can do that. Um, so it's like you have a leadership team that then it gets divided. Not that everybody in the committee isn't working, but that some people will have parts that have that aspect to it. Could I say mm -hmm. the Edom Diversity Initiative has that model and it works beautifully. Although there is one person <laughs> that's <laughs> driving force behind David, of course. Though. Yeah, for mm -hmm. many, since the beginning. What, what okay. model do you know what? Let's, yeah, sorry, Jen. You know what? It's 723. I feel like we should, we should uh, move on to the next, next subject. Do, is there something you, you wanted to say? No, nope, that's good. Okay. Um, do you want to do a quick update on, on our meeting this morning? And I can jump in also. Sure. Um, we had an opportunity to talk with um, Kate Fitzpatrick, um, with Matt Borelli and Mo Handel, and also um, Katie King joined us. Um, and actually, I, I wish we had a little bit more time because I would love to hear Katie talk about what, what they told her her role was in coming to our meetings. Um, but I think that what uh, my understanding was, it, and Katie, please let me know if, if your understanding was different, was that this was... Um, a, a gesture by the select board and um, Kate Fitzpatrick in particular to try to um, open more channels of communication between the committee and the select board so that Katie as a, um, a member of Kate Fitzpatrick's team is gonna regularly be meeting, uh, coming oh. to our meetings to be able to um, facilitate discussion between our, our bodies. Is that, Katie, is that accurate as to what you were told that you were coming for? <laughs> yeah, um, yes, I mean, definitely, I think, so this meeting this morning was obviously my first introduction uh, to NHRC, and, um, I, but yes, that I am here to improve, I think, the communication facilitation, and I just underscore, I guess, from having one conversation, I'm hearing on both sides that, this group needs the select board more and the select board I think is feeling like they need more advising, particularly now. I mean, there's, you know, a lot going on and I think they would appreciate um, your guidance and your suggestions for how to move forward uh, um, specifically around race in Needham. Um, so I, I'm, can, I, this is all new to me, but I am here to be helpful and um, that'll evolve over time obviously what that looks like but great thank you i think that what came out this morning um in terms of the highlights is that um that the select board recognized our role as what matt Borelli called like kind of the boots on the ground and that they recognized that we are a body that community members at least some of them feel safe coming to us um with what's going on in the community and um, in particular with things that are not, not going so well. Uh, and I think that they value that role that we play. Uh, I think we all recognize that, that we're stuck in this place of once people bring us this information that there's not really any kind of um, stated procedure or plan or protocol or anything for like what happens after somebody tells us that something has happened in town. Um, we talked a bit about the um, reports last week at the um, rally at the high school about students talking about feeling um, racially profiled in some of the stores in town and how that was an example of, of something that we would hear that we would want to act on, but there's not any clear place right now for us to make anything happen. And they seemed open to exploring with us what to do next. Um, so I think what I took away from it was that, um, that they perhaps are feeling some of the pressure around town, um, either directly or, or through stories that they're hearing, that they want to be in a better position to act and that they are actually um, valuing what expertise we might bring to the table. Um, mm -hmm. And that there was some, um, one of the kind of big ticket items is that I, I, I did not go to town meeting or didn't attend, but um, Mo Handel apparently had promised to do some kind of town forum uh, to hear from the community about what their concerns are and to bring the chief in to um, answer some questions. They are planning that tentatively for July and they are very much interested in hearing what we would suggest that looks like and how to put it together. 
So um, that feels like a, a very great opportunity for us to um, do some very practical things that again, our committee is in a very unique space to be able to do. Christina, mm -hmm. do you have anything that you want to add? Yeah, no, and then, I mean, and the uh, kind of, yeah, my takeaway was also that they were asking for recommendations right now, you know, what are our <laughs> thoughts right now that we could, um, you know, begin thinking about either for the summer or for the fall, you know, think of programming that we could put in place. Um, was there, was there any more talk about um, the chief or the police department kind of having more of a presence with our organization? Did that get discussed at all or not we today? We talked a little bit about that Belinda had come and that we hadn't been able to really get much response or engagement from either her, her or the chief um, since the, you know, the last few weeks when we've been reaching out to them. Um, but that according to um, the folks that were there that the chief is really interested in having these community conversations um, and it sounds like, like July is the time when, um, when they're hoping or when they're planning on making him available. And I think that, um, I think we could have a, um, a, some, a, a good role to play in trying to t think about how that should look, um, you know, or, or suggesting how that, how that plays out. Mm -hmm. I really miss Lieutenant Kramer right now. <laughs> Right, I agree. I actually okay. missed the chief before he was chief. Mm -hmm. Oh, did did John mm -hmm. used to attend? John used to attend. Yeah, he was um, he was a very important part of I thought of the meeting. Mm -hmm. yes. great. I I wasn't aware of that. That's, that's yeah, he was that's interesting. Yeah, he was very um, very helpful. I I felt. Um, and um, brought a lot to the table. Um, he, I thought he was really good. He was on for a number of years. Yeah, mm -hmm. and do you remember Marlene one time when uh, a person brought a situation of uh, profiling by yeah. some black friends who were visiting in Needham and yeah. they were out in their car and, and he stayed with it with all of the issues that were brought up. So if, I think the two areas of the town that we most need to be involved with, and I think I'd sent this to Christina, is to have some kind of town form about community policing, and the other is going forward with the, um, well, you can, there are many things that are happening about racism that's now come to the fore, but the uh, specific incidents that were shared by the high school students, how to have some kind of of investigation or form or lifting up of that that leads to um, a productive kind of um, courageous conversations, which it sounds like the uh, evening dinner dialogue is going to be pursuing. I'm wondering if this, if they want this in July, that we can't just sort of leave things hanging, whether or not we have a specific leadership. We, this is uh, such an opening that we we need to have a way to go forward with that, and not just say, well, we'll figure out in September what we do. I agree. Um, and I'm really sorry, everybody. I've got to get off. I've got my dad waiting for me for his Father's Day dinner right now in the, in the restaurant, so I've got to scoot. But I, I am, um, you know, happy if we, if we, again, as a smaller group to try to work with them specifically about planning for July. Um, that might be the immediate thing that we need to do right now. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing that I want to just mention is that Dan Gutkans did say he was going to come tonight when he thought it was at five. He couldn't come when it was at six thirty, but he wanted to just share that he's, um, you know, happy that we have this relationship and he's looking forward to working together again um, in the future. That's great. Great. That's really great. Awesome. Sorry, Thanks. guys. No, Take that's care. okay. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Have a nice dinner. Thanks. Bye, bye. Thank you, Jen. Well, maybe we can, um, you know, decide uh, amongst the group who might like to, you know, work together to come up with some of these recommendations for the for the select board for the immediate term. What I would suggest is that we have a Zoom meeting. I think we are so productive when we brainstorm together at a at a meeting, and if everyone could come together and have whoever is available and in town. 
if we could get our ideas together and, 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 and explore all the possibilities and then fine tune that maybe a smaller group could then move forward. Do you mean another another all committee Zoom meeting? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of meeting, committees are continuing to meet over the summer when in the past they might not have. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't matter where you are, if you have <laughs> internet, you can be sure. there. Yeah. So, but the other thing is even more immediate than that is about responding to the request to support them in developing a community forum. Are you saying, uh, Amelia, that we need another meeting of the committee Look before we do that? Look at all those cars. If, uh, well, if, if we're being asked to, to we, mm -hmm. we have to have a meeting. Yeah. When, this is mid Go up to the end or not. Bud, you need to what? mute yourself. Sorry. Yeah, when, Katie, do you know what the, have, have they um, come up with a, a date of when they might like to do something like this? Yeah, so it's actually uh, either going to be a component of or it, or their entire standing select board meeting, which is July 21st, is a Tuesday night. So they amongst themselves just know they are dedicating a portion or all of the agenda to this. But I don't, I, I do want to just make sure my understanding at least is that this is like the start of more things and actually your advice on that for the select board would be helpful. You know, the select board committed at town meeting to have a forum. I think people are struggling with how to do this meaningfully on Zoom. Um, so that that opportunity on July 21st is, a, you know, mm -hmm. your insight on how they can best shape a portion of their standing select board meeting. Okay, so that in theory be more right. opportunities moving forward. Um, okay, so that that community forum was basically about um, the the police and the and the funding that came up at town meeting that I think some people had had um, that was kind of challenged there, right? So is that is that the focused um, piece that you know Mo is committed to address at, at the upcoming select board meeting? I think they've been um, fielding largely questions around the police, but there's okay. a recognition on the board that obviously it's a broader topic. Okay. Okay, so that's the piece that uh, I guess for the short term that they would like our, our immediate assistance with is um, for their upcoming. And I think Mo had, because there were some issues, you know, at, um, at town meeting that there was just an approval for, um, of $33,000 in new guns for the police force and two more um, two more full-time police officers on the force, which currently I think we have something like 49. Um, so I think that there were some, some concerns about that. And uh, so I think that's what then Mo committed to having a community forum to kind of talk about how, the, how why, why the need for um, this funding and more, more officers and, and, Perhaps a space to hear feedback too. I don't. I don't know from from the community. Um, so Amelia, you're just saying that we should have another um, another all committee meeting to just focus on on that. I mean, I feel like we would need to hear from Mo and others what exactly. Yeah, I, I we would need more information so we can. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not an expert uh, in this field. I'm learning. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, reading the news every day on uh, what the issues are, what the uh, important variables are. Um, but I, I think if we could get a, a, a better sense of what they want, uh, the direction they're going, at least for this particular meeting. Yes, and then and then maybe think about other other programming for the fall that uh, might encompass a little bit more than than just this. How do others feel about coming to having another meeting? over the summer. Uh, it's, I mean, it's fine with me if, as long as we know what the focus is. Yeah. Um, it's a focused meeting and we right. have, you know, some bullet points about what we are going to discuss and come up with recommendations um, for them. I think that would mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. And then we have this, this bigger thing about the mission and um, prior listing things that we feel are important to do and uh, putting together how a leadership team would work. 
So presumably that would be part of a July meeting also. Mm -hmm. If there are a lot of things we could be doing by email rather than have the, I think the Zoom meeting, the, I mean, if, it seems that July is not far away and that if, if we are being reached out to, to, to help, then I think we should take advantage of that and focus yes. on, on that. And the, the rest, maybe we could, through communication, people have some time to reflect, think about it, um, and we could correspond with each other and get some ideas together before we have another meeting. And that might be our September meeting um, after we accumulate. Uh, we have two, two topics, uh, other topics at that point. Uh, maybe the, the structure and the focus of our committee uh, might be the next important topic for the fall. Are we allowed to do that under the open meeting law in terms of email discussions? I well, think as long as we don't vote, right? Uh, that's what I thought. I thought as long as we weren't voting on something, we could do that, right? I think we're not. We're not supposed to actually have deliberation. You know, I think if we're deliberating on on something that should be done um, publicly, in a publicly accessible way, if we could gather information and then present, mm -hmm. that would be uh, the the focus of the meeting in September. Mm -hmm. To make yeah. the next meeting more productive. Right, but if we need, if, if the select board is asking for some help with this July meeting, right. um, you know, do we have a responsibility to do that? Mm -hmm. um, or Katie? Not? Yeah, I, I, I guess I, feeling a little chicken or egg with the select board coming up with something and then you all responding to it or giving feedback on it versus understanding that you guys need more structure to respond to. So I, I guess, um, Christina, if there's time, I, I guess I'm just curious, like, what have you been hearing that people want to hear from the select board or want, you know, I think they're looking for that guidance of, is it a presentation from the chief again about the need for, what the town meeting votes were on, or is it that there needs to be a follow-up statement about uh, anti-racism more broadly? Um, I think it's that kind of guidance. Um, oh, I see. You know, at least just given the time frame, and uh, you know, I'm trying to understand kind of where um, the select board. You know, they, you guys are the boots on the ground, so they're like you they feel like you guys are hearing more from folks than they are about okay. what maybe feels like the void coming mm -hmm. from the town right now yeah i mean i think i think you know one of the main things that i've i've been hearing has been just what was the need for um you know for all new new guns what was the need to to spend that money for that and um also to add more to add more police officers to the force um with the idea that maybe it was for some sort of mental health. I don't know. I feel like yeah, people was. heard something like that. I wasn't at time meeting, but for, that there was a need for more mental health support or something. Sandy? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not part of your committee, but I, I, I just feel like I think that the concept that the chief wants to bring forward is, is having more community policing. And I think that that's what is missing. The whole idea of what community policing can look like, what it should be and that kind of thing. It's not just mental health officers. I mean, they do a lot. And I think it's understanding that whole program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was that's what the officers were going to be. That's what the officers were for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I remember uh, John saying to, to us at various times, John Schlittler, about when we were bringing up like Safe Communities Act. And he talked about policies and things not being written and all. And then he said, the select board sets the policy for the police. Right. We implement it. And so I think that's where uh, people in the town are saying, well, what kind, of a, what kind of policing do we want? And I read, I'm sure everybody's reading a whole lot of things about who should, who should be doing the mental health work. And we've heard mm -hmm. Kim and um, John Kramer and a little bit Belinda talk about the main work they do is 
intervening with people who have mental um, health issues or addiction issues or a certain amount of conflicts between people. I found it really useful the times they've said what the police officers spend their time doing. But maybe that, that's part of how we can help them is, is, is relaying that to the public because I don't think that the general public knows all that. Yeah. Well, I think too, the other, the other piece I've heard from some of these um, gatherings has been that, well, why are, you know, asking the why, you know, if, if the gap is mental health um, access or mental health support, why uh, is law enforcement involved in that piece? And we've seen ways where it can go completely wrong, you know, where, yeah. you know, a, a mental health crisis happens and the police are called and that situation escalates. Um, in a whole different way. So I think that concern is also there. You know, that if, if our community members are needing greater mental, what can we do in that way? Are there, you know, um, is there, can we use some funding for access to uh, social workers or, you know, uh, psychologists or psychiatrists or, you know, how else can we allocate resources to meet those needs? You know, starting kind of further upstream. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's the thing with, with regard to that funding that, I, uh, that I've that i been hearing. And I think to, to kind of go back to looking at what the needs of the community are, where we all agree that those needs are there, and then to look at what part the police are playing. And if a lot of their work is happening uh, because there aren't beds in the hospitals, there is the whole closing mm -hmm. of the hospitals, and there's no place for people who are... Uh, unable for whatever reason to live in the community and they keep falling apart and the family can't bring them to a hospital because they're at a point where they need somebody or maybe they need three people or whatever to um, to help them get to an ambulance whatever so I think it's re a really basic kind of thing that maybe the police would appreciate that the community understands what what they're doing. And when they're saying, we don't like this, well, let's look at it together. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering um, why there isn't a community um, survey that goes out. Um, I remember what the library did and where they came up with the, the, the uh, all of the diversity, the book groups and the focus on diversity that the community wanted. Um, I, as we all know, um, the town meeting governance has many flaws. Um, I mean, how many of us know who our town meeting members are? We don't. How many of us contact them and tell them what we want? I don't know who my town meeting member is. Nobody comes mm -hmm. over to my house and asks me. Mm -hmm. But if there were some type of a survey um, to get a sense of the town, it's not just what the Human Rights Committee, we're a small group of people who are very concerned about these things, but what is the town thinking? And if they have a, an idea of what police are doing, but what is it that the town thinks might be good to do um, to get a, a sense of the community? I mean, isn't that part of what democracy is supposed to be like? Um, I think we still live in a democracy or supposedly in a democracy. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just wondering if that might be, um, something that might help the community. Yeah, I, I think, I think you know what, Natick did something like this, a, um, Natick United, you know, with their police chief, and they did ask, it was all by Zoom, and they did ask the community for questions and um, thoughts and, you know, kind of said beforehand, you know, if they could email these things in, and then the, um, the leadership kind of addressed um, those things. So I don't know if that would be a way to do it, but there needs to be some way, I think, at this upcoming forum that the community can give some input or be heard in some way, you know, whether it's through a survey and, um, you know, sending in feedback or, you know, yeah, however it is. But I think I think that would be a good time for um, for those questions and concerns. So maybe, um, Katie, you can take that back. <laughs> For an, for an action step right now, do you need, uh, and since our co-chairs, well, you're still co-chairs till June, end of June? <laughs> till the end of June. Or your end. <laughs> uh, whether we need, let's say three is a nice number, three people who would be available to go back and 
and continue the conversation with the people mm -hmm. you met with this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Are th do we have some volunteers of folks who would like to continue this, be involved in this? And what is it specifically, the, the follow-up to what? Yeah, I think in, in thinking further about um, this upcoming July um, uh, select board meeting where they are, you know, planning to have some sort of a, um, I, I, I don't know, you know, presentation or community conversation or whatever it's going to look like about um, the policing piece, I think. I think that's going to be the main focus. So I was proposing that you have three people go back and meet with Katie and um, Mo or whoever it is that wants to continue that discussion. Yes, yeah. Do we have any, any volunteers or folks who would like to be involved in that? Who is going to meet with them? What who did you say, Amelia? Who is going to follow up? Katie, who will be with their another meeting? Or were you anticipating another meeting with members of the Human Rights Committee? Um, sorry, was that for me? Yes. Okay. Um, no, I mean, when our, our meeting this morning, there was, um, there wasn't like a date set for our next check-in. I, I mean, I'm comfortable. Um, I mean, what I heard just from you all now is presentation from the police chief on the, the need for the additional funding for guns the additional uh, two officers and um, maybe talking about the partnerships that they have around, they have uh, a whole lot of partnerships, uh, Cynthia, you were mentioning, but maybe a presentation on those partnerships and then a community survey. Yeah, I think the survey and, and if maybe if you just went back to them with those ideas, I think. Uh, well, that would be enough, okay. I mean, I, I'm happy to relay that and put it in an email and Christina, okay, and okay great. On it, and um, so you don't have to meet again. I would just say, um, just to, uh, um, I don't want to make any assumptions, but I think they would love also guidance. What does that survey look like? What, mm -hmm. are, you know, what are we asking folks? Um, so if there are people that would be willing to give that some thought, um, that I think it would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. Christina, you said Natick is United had one. That might be interesting to see. Yeah, it wasn't a survey, but they, you know, they just, you know, they held a kind of a Zoom community forum with their police chief and people were able to send in questions of, you know, they had an email, you know, before the thing, uh, mm -hmm. when it was first advertised and said, you know, send in your, your questions, comments, concerns to this email. And so then they went through those. So yeah, I mean, a survey is a different. Yes, Sandy, do you have? I know I I am aware of the time. It is seven yep, fifteen. No, nope, I was just going to say I live in Natick. I knew nothing about that. Yeah. Wow. So I don't know how it was advertised, but just, yeah, so I, I think I think it's, it's probably take for granted the, that people are hearing about these things. Yeah. Sandy, I'm kind of curious when you send out um, an email blast like you did for um, for the interfaith potluck uh, conversation. How many people, how many households are, are on that list? How many people in need have signed up for The that? blast that I sent for the interfaith um, discussion that didn't happen? No, no, no. How many people, I'm, I'm thinking like if we look for a survey or, or we ask people to participate in a forum. Oh, there's like, about 690. Only 690. And how many households are there in the town? I think there's about 10,000, mm -hmm. uh, but we also have social media as well. Mm -hmm. We have a PIO now whose strength is in getting out messaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it may be, you know, another option for you. But that's pretty yeah. small percentage. <laughs> well, but these people right. only signed up themselves, Marlene. They actually I that. took the initiative to do that. Right, I know, but I mean, like, I live in this town. How could I not be part of that? That's, but of course, <laughs> I'm on this committee, so I'm. That's all important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, as the person who connects along with uh, Amelia with NDI and some other groups, that's another source of potential questions because I see Progressive Needham sent out a thing 
well, they sent out lots of things, but it had questions about the police, about policing. There was four or five right there, mm -hmm. which I'm sure they had the answers to, but I mean, it's because uh, they have a particular point of view, but that would be uh, one way of getting something. Yeah, maybe I can send that to you, Katie. Those, the questions that uh, Progressive Needham kind of sent out. And like the uh, Needham Housing Authority, the Residence Council, that would be a group, good group to ask for questions. If we think of who we were putting together for that, for the uh, training program where we were trying to tap different groups, mm -hmm. and, um, that's an example of the, some of the networking. Okay, so I think for our, um, our next steps, I think, you know, for this immediate, um, uh, forum or a select board meeting, I think, Kate, you probably have enough to kind of bring back to them and then you can touch base with us um, again if there, are, if there are further questions or more deliberations that you know, we need to have about this and then we can decide if we need to have another meeting or if um, you know, a few of us can, can help to facilitate that. And we don't have, yeah, since, since this was supposed to be our last meeting, we don't have any other meetings off the books for the, for the time being. Um, there, there, I don't know if anyone has any other final thoughts. I had one, one. yeah, Arlene, do you have your hand up? I can't, uh, there. Well, typically I've, I know we're meeting remotely. I'm the one who always books the room for the last number of years for meetings. And I always do it the third Thursday, unless there's a vaca school vacation, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. So should I be, doing that for or, next year yeah because these meetings these zoom meetings are um this was the night we were supposed to meet um mm -hmm. so should i bother or, or not what do you think sandy Andy, Andy says no <laughs> sorry since down in texas um we don't have permission to have groups oh, okay. more than six people together so i think for the next um uh few months, I think, to at least through to September, I think, we, or we ought to wait. And if something happens, I mean, Mar Marlene and, and Cynthia, uh, you usually go through Louise, who knows that you usually have these meetings, and she's aware of, of when they start up, who needs to get in. So um, okay. I, I think let's just, I, I would suggest that you hold off right now. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to know if I needed to do that. Sorry, Christina, you had something else. No, to that's okay. Um, and then the final, final one, I have one final thought that I had um, with regard to kind of town issues. You know, we had a, a board of health meeting a, a um, couple of days ago. And one of the things that came up is, um, you know, that we also have to keep in mind that, you know, with all of these protests and gatherings and things happening, that we are also in the midst of a pandemic. And so at, you know, if, if our group hears of upcoming um, gatherings, if we could, you know, let, uh, either the public health director Tim or you know myself, you all have my my contact. Uh, no, because I think we'd like to do some more uh, maybe proactive um, educating around kind of how to stay safe in these large gatherings. Uh, and I think these groups have in general done a good job with uh, recommending you know mask wearing and and keeping distance, which is why it's been all along um, Highland. But I think I think that's kind of a, a public health concern too that we would just like to do some, uh, yeah, maybe some more proactive guidance on that. And um, otherwise, I think you know we can make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah, Christina, I sent to yes. everybody the next one, which is Sunday at five o'clock. Okay, okay thanks, Canada. thanks, Cynthia. And before we do that, I think we all owe you and uh, Jen a big thank you for all that you have done. Oh, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Absolutely. It has been, I, I am really going to miss you all. I was just telling Jen, I said, you know what, you all are, are what made Needham feel like home to me. So it is, I mean, we're, we're all friends and we'll see each other, but I'm going to miss you all. And I will definitely stay involved in, in you know, these issues. Thank you, Christina. So much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all for your evening. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy, for all your time. So do you Did want you a motion to adjourn? adjourn? Yeah, you adjourn. I move that oh, we adjourn yes. the meeting. I second. Thank you. We have to vote. We have to vote. Yes, let me do let me do roll call.
<laughs> okay. Cynthia Ganung? Yes. Uh, Jared Pizzuto? Yes. Marlene Schultz? Yes. Bud Schramm? Yes. Ashok Mehta? I think he left. Okay, he might have left. Okay, Julie Venables? Yes. Amelia Klein? Yes. Carrie Hurwich? Yes. And Christina Matthews? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. And Thank we'll be in touch. Bye. Thank you so much, Katie, for coming. Thank you, Katie. Nice.